Hello everyone, my name is Jody Brandon. Welcome to Kids Discovering History. Let me ask you all a question. Have you ever thought of an idea that you believed was quite clever just to have your friends think you were crazy? Well, you're not alone. Many of the things that we know today to be true were not always thought of that way. Once, people believed the Earth was flat. We now know that it's round. Once, people thought that the Earth was the center of our solar system and that the sun revolved around it. We now know that the sun is the center of our solar system and that the Earth revolves around it. How do we know these things? Because there were brave, intelligent people who stood up to the popular beliefs of their times and proposed new theories or ideas on how our universe <laughs> thought to be crazy. That was until their ideas were proven to be true. One of these people was a man named Albert Einstein, and this is his story. Widely considered to be the greatest thinker of the 20th century, Albert Einstein contributed more to the field of modern physics than any other scientist in history. From his humble beginnings in Ulm, Germany, to his last days in Princeton, New Jersey, his life was one of thoughtful exploration and discovery. His ideas gave people a new understanding of time and space, mass and energy, and gravity and light. A pacifist by nature, Einstein would lead the world into the atomic age with the invention of the most destructive weapon ever created by man, and then spend the rest of his life speaking out for peace. We now present the extraordinary life of Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein was born on March 14, 1879, in this house in Ulm, Germany. His mother, Pauline, was a quiet woman with a passion for music and literature. His father, Hermann, had a fun-loving nature that often interfered with the small electrical workshop which he owned at the time of Albert's birth. Since Hermann enjoyed trips to the countryside more than running his own business, the electrical shop soon failed. He moved his family to Munich in search of a better life. He soon opened an electrical equipment shop with his brother Jacob. Business was good, and soon young Albert had a baby sister. Her name was Maria, but everyone called her Maja. She and Albert would remain close to each other's hearts for the rest of their lives. Nothing in Einstein's early childhood suggests dormant genius. In fact, he was a slow developer, late in learning to speak. Even when he was nine, his speech was not fluent. His parents feared that Albert was mentally retarded. Between 1884 and 1889, Albert attended Catholic school in Munich. Although he and his family were Jewish, the Catholic school was closer to his home and less expensive than the nearest Jewish school. At school, he quickly developed a deep dislike of formal education. He wondered why the students could only answer questions and not ask them. The school's headmaster once told Hermann Einstein that his son Albert would never make a success of anything. Albert's real education began at home. His uncle Jacob introduced him to the mathematics of algebra and geometry. 
Albert found much pleasure in solving simple algebraic and geometrical problems on his own. When Albert was five and ill in bed, his father gave him a compass to play with. What impressed the child the most was that the iron needle of the compass always pointed north, no matter which direction he was facing. He thought that it must be affected by something that existed in space, something invisible. This fascinated young Einstein. He began to read popular science books. These books were given to him by a young medical student named Max Ptolemy, who would often visit the Einstein's home. With Ptolemy's guidance, Albert taught himself calculus, an advanced form of mathematics, and studied philosophy. He was only 13 years old. In 1889, he began to receive his high school education at the Luitpold Gymnasium in Munich. Again, he thought the teachers were much too strict and believed that many of the school's rules prevented students from thinking for themselves. In 1894, Herman and Jacob's shop had fallen on hard times and the two Einstein families decided to pack it up and move to Milan, Italy. They decided, though, that Albert should be left behind to finish his school year at the gymnasium. At 15 years of age, Albert was alone in Munich, and his attitude in school was getting worse. He soon decided to leave school and join his family in Italy. But soon, Hermann Einstein's business began to fail again, and he urged his son to look to the future and learn some way to make a living for himself. His father sent him to school in Switzerland. Herman hoped that his son would become an electrical engineer, but that career did not interest Albert. He wanted to study physics, the science of matter and energy. In Zurich, Switzerland stood the famous Federal Institute of Technology, known to many as the Polytechnic. It is here at the age of 16 that Albert took the entrance examinations of the Department of Engineering he failed to pass the exams. The director of the Polytechnic urged Einstein to seek a diploma at the Progressive Swiss Cantonal School in the town of Arau. It was here that Einstein asked himself what a light wave would look like to someone keeping pace with it. This question would go unanswered for 10 years. When it was finally answered, it changed the world forever. After he received his diploma in 1896, he was finally admitted to the Zurich Polytechnic. As a student at the Polytechnic, he often failed to attend lectures, opting instead to work on his own by reading the works of great pioneers in science and philosophy. It was here where he met Maleva Marich, a fellow student and his future wife. He also met Marcel Grossman, a brilliant mathematician, who took meticulous notes during the many lectures and gladly let Einstein study these notes before the final exams. Einstein graduated from the Polytechnic in 1900 at the age of 21. In 1901, he gave up his German citizenship and became a Swiss citizen. In 1902, his friend Marcel Grossman came to his aid again. Marcel helped Albert get a job in the Swiss Patent Office in Bern, Switzerland. To Albert, his years in the Patent Office were time well spent. Working on other people's patent applications taught him to express his ideas more clearly in writing. It also gave him the opportunity to think about physics in his spare time. In 1903, he married Maleva Marich. Their first son, Hans Albert, was born a year later. During the day, he worked in the patent office. At night, he worked on his beloved physics and the many ideas that were floating in his head. In 1905, he decided to put these ideas down on paper. Einstein wrote a number of articles for a German magazine for scientists. It was called Annalen der Physik, or the Physics Annals. After reading those articles, scientists would never think or work the same way again. One of the papers dealt with the photoelectric effect, which concerns the emission of electrons from metal surfaces exposed to light. Theoretically, this study represented a cornerstone of quantum physics 
and would make it possible for many future inventions, such as television. Another paper dealt with providing a method for determining the dimensions of molecules. The third paper was titled, On the Electrodynamics of Moving Bodies, but would soon be known forever as the Special Theory of Relativity. Sir Isaac Newton had called time and space absolute, meaning that time flowed in a constant stream. Time, he stated, was the same for everyone, regardless of location. Einstein proved Newton wrong. Einstein wrote that time and space were relative and that they depended on a person's location in relation to objects and events. Another conclusion from this paper deals with mass and energy. Einstein believed that matter and energy were different forms of the same thing. This is the meaning behind the famous equation E equals mc squared, which translates to energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. This formula told scientists that every tiny atom, the smallest unit of an element, contains a great deal of energy. It followed from the special theory of relativity that mass and energy are both are but different manifestations of the same thing, a somewhat unfamiliar conception for the average mind. Furthermore, the equation E is equal mc squared, in which energy is put equal to mass multiplied with the square of the velocity of light, showed that very small amount of mass may be converted into a very large amount of energy, and vice versa. The mass and energy were, in fact, equivalent. According to the formula mentioned above, this was demonstrated by Cochrane and Walton in 1932 experimentally. It would be 40 years before the world knew just how much energy could be released from the atom. Throughout Europe, word spread about these ideas from the Swiss patent clerk. Many scientists could not understand them, and others just thought these ideas to be crazy. But soon, it became clear to most everyone that Einstein's discoveries were remarkable. Still, even with his newfound fame, Einstein continued to work as a clerk at the Swiss patent office until 1909. In that year, Einstein obtained a full-time academic post at the University of Zurich teaching physics. Soon, Albert and Maleva had a second child, which they named Edward. Einstein was soon discovering it was very difficult to find the spare time for his new ideas. He and Maleva were starting to grow apart under the strain. In 1912, with his reputation growing, Einstein was appointed to a professorship at his old school, the Zurich Polytechnic Institute. His co-workers enjoyed his good sense of humor and down-to-earth ways. His students enjoyed his company as well, finding him very easy to talk to. It was right around this time that Einstein first learned about Zionism. This was a growing movement to establish a Jewish homeland in Palestine in the Middle East. It would be a subject which Einstein would speak out on later in life, but not for now. Physics was still his main cause. In 1914, Einstein moved to Berlin and was appointed to a professorship at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Physics. His wife Maleva did not care for Berlin, and she took her two sons back to Switzerland within a few months. Soon, World War I had begun, with Germany and Austria fighting against France, England, and later, the United States. Maleva stayed in neutral Switzerland during the war, and because of her unhappy marriage with Albert, she never returned. In 1919, they were divorced. It was during World War I that Albert Einstein completed work on a theory that he had called the happiest thought of my life. This was the general theory of relativity and it would make him famous the world over. It showed that gravity, like time, is relative, not absolute as Sir Isaac Newton asserted. Einstein also discovered that gravity from very large objects, such as stars, could attract light 
and that these stars could actually bend light rays that passed close to them. This theory has helped scientists understand how gravity from stars affects the orbits of the planets. It also helped to explain the phenomenon of black holes. These are areas far away in space where gravity is so strong that not even light can escape. This did not sit well with many leading scientists of the day. They wanted physical proof of Einstein's theory. In 1919, they got it. It was during a solar eclipse on May 29, 1919, that photographs were taken in the Southern Hemisphere, the best place to see the eclipse. One set of photographs were taken showing the stars in the sky during the solar eclipse. Another set of photographs were taken showing the stars at night when the sun was not present. By comparing the two sets of photographs, it was proven that the starlight that passed the sun had been pulled very slightly toward it by the sun's gravity. This was all the proof that Einstein needed. He was hailed throughout the world as a genius. It was also during 1919 that Einstein married his cousin, Elsa Lowenthal. It would prove to be a long and happy marriage. In 1921, Albert and Elsa traveled the world. They were honored guests in England, France, Japan, and the United States, where Einstein received numerous honors and awards. It was also in 1921 that Einstein was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics. This prize was not for the theory of relativity, but rather for his work on the photoelectric effect from one of his famous 1905 papers. His theory of relativity was still considered controversial at the time of the award. Now with the world following his every word, he began to speak out on Zionism, and he wanted to help create a Hebrew university in Jerusalem, where young Jews throughout the world could get a good education. In 1929, the Great Depression began in America and soon was affecting all of Europe. As economic hardships spread throughout Germany, many started to blame the Jews for their troubles. Some even said that Einstein's ideas were a Jewish plot to ruin Germany. It was while Albert and Elsa were on a trip to the United States in 1933 that they learned of Adolf Hitler's seizing power in Germany. Hitler had wanted to create an Aryan master race, which did not include Jews. Public bonfires began with the burning of Jewish literature, including copies of Einstein's theories. Albert and Elsa decided not to go back to Germany and eventually made the United States their permanent new home. It is here in Princeton, New Jersey, that Einstein took a job at the Institute for Advanced Studies. He and Elsa moved into a small white house at 112 Mercer Street and began a new life. But all was not well for long. In 1936, Elsa Einstein died after a long illness. In the years that followed, he shared his home with his secretary, Helen Dukas, his stepdaughter Margot, and his sister Maja. To many of the students at Princeton University, Albert Einstein was a local character, always wearing baggy clothes, never wearing socks, and of course, his long, white, uncombed hair. Einstein believed that worrying about haircuts and socks took time away from his important work. In 1939, World War II began when Germany invaded Poland. Einstein, being a pacifist, had opposed war in the past, but now believed that the Nazis of Germany had to be stopped at all costs. Einstein had learned that scientists in Berlin had successfully split the nucleus of a uranium atom. Taking into account his formula of E equals MC squared, he knew that this splitting of uranium would release a great deal of energy, enough to create a bomb of enormous destructiveness. In a letter he wrote to President Franklin Roosevelt, Einstein urged the president to develop this atomic bomb before the Germans did. Einstein stated that a single bomb of this type, carried by boat or exploded in a port, might very well destroy the whole port, together with some of the surrounding territory. 
However, such bombs might very well prove to be too heavy for transportation by air. Heeding Einstein's warning, the United States government began employing physicists to develop this bomb. This was known as the Manhattan Project. They worked in great secrecy in the desert at Los Alamos, New Mexico. Einstein was not asked to join the project, as the government believed him to be too outspoken to be trusted, even though in 1941, Albert Einstein became an American citizen. On August 6, 1945, 40 years after Einstein had theorized about E equals MC squared, his theory would finally be proven. An atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, Japan by a U.S. bomber. A few days later, a second bomb was dropped on Nagasaki, Japan. Nearly 200,000 people were killed or injured. The Japanese soon surrendered, and World War II was finally over. After learning of the damage that the atomic bombs caused, Einstein regretted his push to have them developed. He called his letter to Roosevelt the greatest mistake of my life. For the rest of his life, Albert Einstein worked for world peace. After learning of the millions of Jews killed by the Nazis, Einstein more than ever spoke out for his wish for a Jewish homeland in Palestine. In 1948, his wish came true when the nation of Israel was formed. Chaim Weissman became its first president. In 1952, Weissman died and Israel's prime minister, David Ben-Gurion, began looking for a new president. Ben-Gurion came to America to ask Einstein if he would accept the office of the presidency. Einstein was deeply honored but turned down the offer by saying, I know little about nature and hardly anything about men. As the years went by and Einstein grew older, he kept busy working, but made no more great discoveries. He spent the last years of his life working to develop a unified field theory. This theory was supposed to explain gravity and all of nature's hidden forces. It would also explain the motion of matter in both the tiny world of atoms and the infinite regions of space. Einstein was not successful in this final project, but he believed that he was headed in the right direction. He was working on this unified field theory the night before he died of a heart ailment on April 18, 1955. Einstein had given specific instructions in the event of his death. No funeral, no grave, and no monument. His remains were to be cremated and scattered in an undisclosed location. His home nor his office was to become a shrine. He thought of himself to be just an ordinary man. But as a man, Einstein was anything but ordinary. He was a genius in every sense of the word. His theories revolutionized physics and brought the world into the atomic age. Scientists today have a better understanding of the universe because of his genius. Einstein was much more than a great thinker. He was also a great soul who spoke out for peace. But most of all, he was a man who never stopped questioning the world around him. These questions running through the mind of Albert Einstein and their remarkable answers changed the world forever. Well, kids, I hope you enjoyed our program. I want you all to remember that any idea, no matter how crazy or far-fetched it might seem, just might change the world forever. If you don't believe me, just remember the story of the young patent clerk named Albert Einstein.